a journey across America. A vast and diverse landscape reflecting its equally vast and diverse people. Interviewing strangers on a whim, this feels right. They feel right for this. They have something to voice on the subject of body image. These comfortable with like what I don't like the most? That's a good question. Damn, um... Damn, this is like super intimate shit, man. <laughs> My stomach. My waist. My legs probably. Maybe like this part right here. Okay. Just a little pooch. My butt. <laughs> My butt as well. <laughs> Damn it! Sometimes I kind of feel like I'm kind of a bit too chubby around my stomach. Everyone wants a super tiny waist yeah, yeah. and a super big butt and big hips. Exactly. And it's just like, I'm almost there, but not quite. Exactly. exactly. Like halfway. Exactly. What should I see? My hips. <laughs> Over the course of six weeks, my partner and I drove across America. Along the way, we met some unique characters from some of the country's most iconic cities and states. The gay dancer in a straight club. The artist. The twins. And the man with two faces. began my journey in New York. My first conversation would be with Amanda Citarella. In 2015, Amanda began a non-profit organization called Be Beauty. The mission of Be Beauty is to grow the self-esteem of teen girls by giving them more ethical and sustainable beauty and fashion alternatives. Amanda delivers workshops in schools while also offering one-to-one -one sessions. I asked Amanda what her program involves. Okay, so everything that we talk about specifically relates back to the beauty and fashion industries. The more obvious things that we talk about are healthy eating. The less obvious things that I talk about are things like um, where do your clothing come from, whether it's from animals, whether it's from sweatshops, um, like what is your everyday impact? Are your cosmetics tested on animals? Are there toxins in your cosmetics? By making a younger generation more conscious of these things, they'll feel empowered and they won't feel like me, where I was just a consumer going to the mall thinking I need to be a certain way. I'm hoping that they'll get out of that cycle sooner. Is, is your program encouraging them to kind of be overly too? conscious? What do you think about that? Yeah, so everything that I... Um, talk about is very age specific so like when I teach a class to 12 year olds I don't really talk about like sweatshops and these global <laughs> issues I only really broach those issues with older groups of girls that can handle that emotionally the motivation for me personally was that when I was a teenager I had very terrible self-esteem and uh, an eating disorder and um, I felt like I had tried every diet, I had been to therapy, which should help to some degree, and I kind of didn't know what was going to make me feel better until I was in college and I received, I received a leaflet from a nonprofit organization that was a vegan organization and um, I got really passionate about that cause. And by becoming very passionate about something that was bigger than myself, that's when I finally started to feel better about myself. And how do you get to a place where you have an eating disorder? It's a culmination of like so many different little issues. I can't say that like just society was to blame. I think that there's a huge pressure on young girls to look a certain way. I do not blame my parents, but my 
mother was bulimic and my father's very weight conscious. Whether that was genetic or whether that was just like a learned sort of behavior from seeing my parents very conscious around food, that probably played some role. Again, they were wonderful parents and I don't blame them, but all those things together made me sort of strive to be this thing that I thought if you were a perfect weight, then everything would be perfect. But I think most people know that that's not true. Would you say that we're kind of going through like a self-esteem epidemic? It's hard to tell. So I'm 28 years old. I, when I was a kid, feel like I had a great disadvantage not growing up with the internet in the way that like now I've used it so much to my advantage to learn about the truth behind things and that makes me feel better and stronger. If I never had the internet, I maybe wouldn't know much about like eating healthy or where different things come from and so that's been good. On the other hand, you have kids now growing up with the internet and they're basing their self-worth on how many Instagram followers they have and like looking at just like a slew of pictures of like these beautiful models that are unattainable and so there's all of this Photoshop. Things are getting a little bit better in the way that there's been a lot of like body positive models coming out. In some way we're making strides, which is wonderful. Um, but we have so, so far to go still. It's still pretty terrible. <laughs> Amanda is on the front line of body image warfare. Her views triggered a realization. Passion for something greater than oneself is essential to penetrate our self-obsessed body shaming culture. Next stop, the Windy City, with its silver skyscrapers contrasting against striking ornate architecture. A blissful buzz seemed to drift in the breeze along the Chicago River. And that's when I came across the Hobson twins. I'm Vanessa. Vanita. Hobson. Hobson. We are the Hobson twins. <laughs> My feet. First of all, they look bad. Second of all, they, I just got the jeans with like dry feet. So I think everything else about me is like, okay, like it could be a little better. You know, like, my boobs used to be bigger, they shrunk, but it's okay. Everything else, it's like, okay, but my feet, I would change that. Okay, so my mom, our our mom, has dry feet. My dad she has beautiful, feet. Yeah, yeah, beautiful feet. My dad had beautiful feet. I have my dad's feet. She has my mom's feet. Yeah, so. and it's really bad. Like, I get mad at her all the time. My thighs. It's like the cellulite thing. Um... I, I don't know why, but I love how skinny looks. But there's I, this weird dynamic because, like, I'm, I'm skinny and I don't have a lot of shape, and she does. So growing up, everybody was, like, impressed with her shape and was like, oh, when are you going to, like, start getting hips and stuff like that because we're twins. And I was just like, I thought it was going to happen for me, and then, like, it didn't. And so then it was like, oh, I'm skinny. I don't have a lot of shape. And I wanted to have shape like her, and then I feel like she wanted to be skinny like me. Ooh. Let me Jennifer on. Aniston. Benita, she's straight as hell. I love that. You said if you if I could get a body. Benita, come on, you gotta pick somebody better. No, than I'm that. saying you guys don't understand. Like, I love the fact that she has such a long torso. I have the shortest torso ever. She has such a long, beautiful torso. Now she can wear like those low rider jeans with like a t-shirt with a little bit of stomach showing. Yes! Yeah. Oh yeah. my god, I love that. Okay, but I wouldn't pick her if I could have like anybody in the world. What was it? What would it be? Mine? First of all, this, is, a, this is like a very like deep question. I don't really, I'm trying to think. Answer the question. I don't know who I would pick, a celebrity body? Um, Julia Roberts, first of all. I live and die by Julia Roberts. She's not. Oh my yeah. god, I love Julia Roberts. Yeah. yeah. I love her. Okay, when you get home, look up Michael B. Jordan. He's sexy. Sexy, bad ass. Yeah, and he's, he's so good. sweet. He seems like he does. I hope you're looking him. at this. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping with the theme of duplicity, 
my next muse leads a double life. Dissociative identity disorder is a mental condition characterised by two or more distinct identities. I had never heard of this disorder until I met Aaron. Throughout my life, I've had this, I guess you can call it another voice in my head, which I've always just kind of assumed that everybody had like a, I guess I call it the voice of reason or some kind of your inner self that you consult. Uh, but the older I get, the more I kind of realize that this other voice has kind of its own persona. I went out and I guess what you would call what people would call drag and this other persona came out and took control and I allowed it but it's almost like I'm watching through like like a, like virtual reality goggles like I'm there and I can see and hear but I kind of don't experience it in the same way I guess the best way I can explain it is with two people in my head one being me Aaron the brawny, fairly broad, bearded guy, uh, and then Olivia. How did you pick the name? Um, well, we were going through names, because she kind of started to seep her way out once once we got dressed up, and we were like, oh, I actually look kind of good. And like, this is nice. Okay, great. We were, me and I, he was doing my, my makeup, and, uh, she was like, so what do you want to be called? And I was like, I don't know. Just Aaron, that's a, that's a, can be a gender neutral name, it's fine. And she's like, hmm, I don't know. And she's very intuitive. And so we were kind of going back and forth and she just looked at me and goes, Olivia. And it just felt right. With my body image, I see men and I'm like, oh, I wish I had that. I wish I had pecs like that, I wish I had arms like that, I wish I had this, I wish I could grow a beard, I wish I had that jaw. Um, and then when I see women, there's a part of myself that I find going, oh, I wish I, I wish I could wear that, I wish I could look good in that. Ever since I was a kid, I remember like really little, I would, uh, I would put on my mom's underwear when I'd see it in the laundry, I'd be like, oh, sneak off and put it on and see what that was like. and. It wasn't like I felt like I was trapped in a body, but it felt like there was a part of me that was being expressed. As soon as I let go of the reins of like suppression of her, she was like, oh, I can exist. And me being me, I had to go, okay, cool, this, you've got to let this happen or else I'm going to have nothing but conflict in my head. What would make you feel more comfortable? Um, I think just a better understanding of what it is, mm -hmm. exactly, what, what it means and why. But I think those are questions that everybody has when they're in a situation similar to mine. I think everybody's asking, why, is, why am I like this? What's wrong with me? But I just, I don't, I don't think that there's, I try not to think that there's anything wrong with me. Okay to meet Olivia. Yeah. Just have to print. <laughs> okay. You don't mind, so. That's great. Okay. We'll return to Olivia later, but in the meantime, I needed more answers. My butt. <laughs> My butt as well. <laughs> Damn it! It's too small, duh. I have the world's it's... flattest butt, but you know what? That's alright. That's alright. I honestly can't remember a specific day that I was like, wow, you have a very flat butt. But I've just always remembered like, dang, girl. <laughs> dang, it's too flat. <laughs> I would say, I don't know, I have different days for different things. Okay. But probably like, oh, I don't know. My toes aren't done. I need to okay. get my toes done. <laughs> Maybe that. <laughs> I remember being in fourth grade and, um, you know, like I was getting boobs. And I remember a girl came up to me and I was in gym class and she was like, you have to wear a bra because you have boobs and that's gross. And I remember just being like distraught. <laughs> and I went home and I cried and I cried and I cried and I was like, mom, I need a bra because
because this girl in gym class says I need a bra. And it was horrible. It was awful. Oh my god. And I just remember like after that being really self-conscious about like people can see me and what I'm doing and what I'm wearing and they care. And that was, mm -hmm. I don't know, it was awful. I hated it. My legs probably. Probably my boobs. I went on the pill a while ago for like a year um, straight and they got bigger. And I liked the size they were then. And then when I came off the pill, like in two weeks, they were just like shrunk again. Even I make jokes about it and like other people make jokes about it. So I don't really care that much, but if anything, I just wish they were a bit bigger. Probably my like torso area, my, my body. Because I focus a lot on it when I'm like working out. Yeah. Um, my face. <laughs> um, because I get compliments a lot on like my eyes and my hair. Um, and I feel like if my skin's bad on my face, like, I feel really insecure. But if it's good, then I feel positive and like radiate that confidence. And then it just makes me feel better as a whole. Keeping with the theme of LA actors, I wondered if celebrity culture had filtered through to my other interviewees. Oh. Megan Good. No. Ooh, Ooh, that's a good one. I guess Shay Mitchell. Jessica yeah. Alba has a rockin' body. Yeah, I would is. not mind having Jessica <laughs> Alba's body. If I had to. If you had to, yeah. I had to. Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> it's time to return to Aaron, or should I say Olivia? Few people are aware of Olivia's existence, so when Aaron agreed to let us meet her, I wasn't sure of what to expect. Okay, so how are you feeling, firstly? Nervous. Um, I don't know. I tend to, I tend to avoid um, consciously comparing myself to other women because I'm obviously not mm -hmm. in a female body. My insecurities about that could seep into Aaron and his already existing insecurities. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that because I, I just try to avoid it because I know that I'll just go down kind of a dark hole of hating myself and I'm working really hard on not doing that just because I know that it's not a matter of, oh, I could lose weight and look like that woman, or I could do this or do that. I would have to go through a whole transition, mm -hmm. and even then, you know, it's... Your lives are 80% our and maybe, you know, 20% mm -hmm. Olivia. Is that going to balance out to 50-50, or where do you see that going? Yeah, we both like it, too. And I have, I have to do my best to respect Aaron, just like he does his best to respect me. Mm -hmm. And seeing as how I have been mostly invisible to the outside world, I can understand how people would perceive my existence as, well, I let this person free, let them come out, let them be who they are. But then you run into the conflict of, well, if we do that, what happens to Aaron? Mm -hmm. You know, where is the balance? If I come out 50-50, is he comfortable with that? Because if he's not, it's going to show. And I'm going to feel bad. I will feel bad. I'm getting used to not feeling like a second-hand human being. And... It's kind of a weird thing to say, but I'm, I mean, I've kind of lived my whole life just with Aaron in this body, and suddenly, hello, I'm outside and touching things and feeling things and smelling things, and, and it's all very familiar, and it's all very real, and it's all very, it's, that's not like foreign to me, but it is different. And it's terrifying. And so... I'm sorry, I got off track. Um, 
It's okay. Just take a breather. I mean, I look at myself in the mirror and I just see a droopy, melty, horrible looking woman, but a very handsome man. And I know Aaron looks in the mirror and sees a dopey, nerdy, chubby, unattractive man when he looks in the mirror. Sometimes I feel like I'm not even real. And then I show up out here and it's like, oh no, I am. And I have to confront that every day. The following day, I reflected on Olivia's words. I admit, at first, I was dubious of Aaron's claims. But both Aaron and Olivia had dulled my doubts with their difference in speech and body language. My experience with both personas had been uncanny. Surely, it would be an interview I would remember for years to come. New Orleans was our next destination, and it was off the scale. A ruckus of colour and musical madness on every street. I stopped by in the local artist co-op, Dutch Alley, and had a chat with the girls who worked there. Which part of your body are you least comfortable with? My upper arms. My belly. Okay. <laughs> You're all good. You're all good. Excellent. It's called self-affirmation. Which part, part of your body are you most comfortable with? My smile. Yeah? Some days. I never, I never <laughs> thought of what part I'm comfortable with. I always think of what part I'm not comfortable with. See? Then you'd have a bad body image. What am I comfortable with? My inner self. Your hands. You're good with your You're hands. Physical. You're excellent with your hands. Well, I don't think of anything. Huh. You know what? As an adult, my height hated it when I was young, but I'm tall. Whoa. So I know. <laughs> so as an adult, now now I can I carry my height with pride. And if I could give you your dream celebrity body for one day, who would you pick? Oh. Sigourney Weaver. She looks pretty good. She's tall. Yeah. Well, that's true too. And she looks, she works out, she looks good, she has this natural beauty. I've never thought about having someone else's body because for me, it's capability that's more important than, than what it looks like, so. I know what you really wanted to say. You wanted my body. <laughs> I know. You're not a celebrity yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Tampa. Yeah, I don't know. That, I would switch to be a guy for a day, so if we had to do a celebrity body, oh, just that would to know be so it bad. felt like, it would be bad, but it's only one day. I so, did it for one day. So I would do it just to see what the other gender yeah, felt like. like. Oh, that's a good idea. Felt like? Wow. Well, not like. Yeah, yeah. I can eat that far. <laughs> I want to know, yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does Karen want to answer? Karen. Uh-oh, she's, uh -oh, okay. she's, she's <laughs> breaking down. Let me catch what you. What part of your pass. body are you happiest oh, with? Come forward. Like my ankles and my your calf. You got oh, it. You nice. have good legs. Yeah, you have good yeah. ankles. Go and show us your legs. Okay. <laughs> show us your legs. Come on, up, up. Come on, put it on the couch. Yeah. She wants to see a Are picture. You Do it. Let me hold you right here. <laughs> 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 Woo! We saw a little bit more of your leg there. <laughs> I wanted to know as well, like how how do you see yourselves? And how do you think other people see you? What do you mean by see us? Like physical body? How do you see physical? yourself? How do you think you come across to people? Intimidating. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. You mean interest in my answer or interesting? You come across as interesting? No, no, I think that answer is interesting. Um, <laughs> because actually when I first met you, I wasn't. Yeah, people are, but by the, by the it's your side. Mm -hmm. it's your side. I think I come across as a middle-aged lady, middle-aged white lady, and I'm so not that on the inside. Mm -hmm. the, that's kind of, you know, as you're aging, I think that's unfortunately what our society, so honestly, I think that that's how most people see me. 
And what was the second question? How do you want people to see it? Yeah. I don't know. Artistic, I guess, is how I'd like people to see me, but I think I look like a soccer mom most of the time, which is not how I want to No, I don't. Okay, good. That's true of suburban housewives. No, no. I haven't answered one question. Answer? Um, huh. Well, today, I just put my dog down. So today I feel like the smallest I've ever felt and the emptiest I've ever felt. Before that, um, life's been good. That's how I look at it. And it was great. And now I'm a little down, but I know it'll pick back up. So we all have our moments of going in and out of ourselves. And right now I'm out of myself. So I can't really answer that question. Maybe a week ago, I could have given you a great answer, but right now, and that's how I feel, and I feel like everybody goes through that, loses themselves, and uh, I'll know I'll be there again, so. These girls offered a far greater insight than I could have possibly asked for. I couldn't help but feel this project was turning into something more than it initially set out to be. on the road again, but Louisiana was not pleased to see us leave. Grey clouds rolled in, and keen to keep to our schedule, we had no choice but to continue the drive through wind, rain, thunder, and lightning. Finally, after an hour of torrential downpour, we saw the light, and my partner and I were safely Texas bound. After an eight hour drive, we arrived in Austin where I visited Hope Outdoor Gallery. Among the colorful chaos was a large scale mural and her creator, Chris Montoya. Which part of your body are you least comfortable with? Of my body? Mm -hmm. um, damn, this is like <laughs> super like, I guess my... Uh, Damn, this is like super intimate shit, man. <laughs> um, I guess like uh, my face, okay. um, because I, I uh, you know, I have a little bit of an overbite, so it's I guess uh, uncomfortable sometimes. You know? But Morrissey had one, so I always say, you know, that's my boy right there. <laughs> it's uh, you know, yeah, that's it. Something not too buff and something not too skinny. Like in between, who's in between? I guess, um, I don't know if I'd want one really. If, if I had someone else's body, then I'd be, uh, I wouldn't be me. And I wouldn't know, I wouldn't really see the world the way I see it, I guess. How come you picked Paola behind you? How come you chose her specifically? Yeah, she, she, um, wow, yeah, she, I, I saw her uh, on Instagram initially, and she caught my attention because she was so authentic with her, with her style. Like in the Chicano culture, like there's a lot of people now that are like, you know, pretty girls and, and they get dressed up in Hollywood and try to put on the, the jewels and try to be cholas, but this girl was like, a real chola, you know, and she just didn't give, like, she just don't, like, she really embodies the attitude, and it's not just a fashion for her, it's really, like, a lifestyle for her, and there's a lot of girls that are mad at me because of it, because they wanted me to paint them, and, uh, they, they told me to paint them, you know, prior to me painting her, and so I painted her, and I know that there's, like, some, some bitterness out there, <laughs> I'm going to assume that most of my audience aren't going to understand, or like, know much Mexican. So, what's a chur? A chur? You said a chola. A chola, yeah. A what's chola that? is uh, these women are kind of like these these kind of rough cut women from from you know kind of beaten down neighborhoods, and they they have their own like style. And back in the day, like in the 80s and the 90s, they were kind of at their peak, you know. Uh, but it all started from like the 70s 
and uh, with lip line, you know, with lip liner and cat eyes and the big earrings and dickies and like. So it's like there's a whole, a whole aesthetic to it. And to be completely real, you have to live it and you have to wear it. You know. You seem like you really admire that. Yeah, I do. I do, and I, I put it in this, in the, you know, because to me that's like. No, I always had a thing for people who really just didn't give a fuck, you know, mm -hmm. and just like did them and were proud of who they were instead of trying to be somebody else. Authenticity and courage are two traits that reminded me of my final interview with Aaron's roommate, Lee. Outside of being an event coordinator, Lee has been working as a dancer in a strip club for the past seven months. She told me about her first night on the job. Well, nobody trains you. You walk in there and um, you have an idea because of what people tell you what it's like to be a dancer. I had a weave. I, I, got, I got a weave because I felt like guys would like me more with long hair. And I wore um, a Victoria's Secret, like the most extreme push-up bra. And I wore uh, black leather boots, seven and a half inch high heels. Um, what do you wear now? seven months on. I get little boys t-shirts because they fit me um, and I cut them right about here and no more weave. So I took, I took the weave out. The job was seeping into my real life with having the weave. You know, I'm, I'm the type of person clearly that I want to have my short hair. I want to be somebody outside of the club. I did not expect anybody to pay me the same, I, I, I was like, but I'm gonna fucking try it, I'm gonna go out there, and I left that night making $1,100, which was more than I'd made with my long hair. I, I, made, I made way more than I ever made when I was not being like myself, you know? So actually, I actually made more. It's almost like my happiness shifted. And when your happiness shifts, people can almost read that on you. And it shows you that it's not what you, it's not what the media forces you to actually be. The media is fucking bullshit. The media is trying to condition them because if you can condition somebody, you can make money from them because then you can control them. Then you can make them if you can figure out what they want, make them want something, then you, they can be your cash cow. There's a cliche. We all like, the guys I think feel like they have to say a certain thing to, you know, be with their bros. Like, they, like, oh, yo, you should be with a big tits, you fucking blonde hair. I mean, what do you know America for? Fucking blonde hair, fucking fake boobs, you know, like the, all, the, all the stuff, you know. Because if all the women stop putting themselves to this standard that, oh, there's a condition, then, because, uh, like, I think a lot of women would actually benefit from being in a strip club for a night or two to understand that you don't have to be this thing. Humans are full of variables. There's not a condition. Strip clubs are bad. I understand that. But being in there has really exposed me to when you it, it's it's the reduction of like human behavior when you go in there everybody is like the primal being and you get to actually see exactly how everybody interacts how women want to be attractive and how, what men want and i i see everything and you know what it's all variables and that's kind of the beautiful thing that this, this club has actually shown me. And it's, it's really cool, actually. Beauty, which is really important to men, is only deep down conditioned by themselves. After saying our farewells to Austin, we hit the road to claim the most rewarding part of our trip. At the beginning of my journey, I had no idea how this project would come together, or whether it would even work at all. What I did know was body image is something everyone can engage with. I wanted to show my viewers that through all our differences, be it our social background, race or religion, we have similarities too. We all have hang-ups and things we wish we could change about ourselves. 
But ultimately, our perceptions of our own imperfections are small, and it's the capability of our human spirit that matters most. All the new places I'd seen, and all the amazing people I'd met, whether they realised it or not, upheld this faith, because they were generous enough to allow themselves to be vulnerable. Capturing this side of the human spirit and reveling in all its glorious, awkward spontaneity. That alone is something we can all be proud of. Accept you and who you are. Relish in who you are and just enjoy life. It is so precious. That's great. I'll end it on that. That's fantastic. <laughs> You're most welcome. <laughs>